But you thought we had the French Derby last week? Guess what? We have another one coming up right now. A French Derby part two or Big Brother versus Small Brother, I guess you could say. But here, the Big Brother is just constantly stealing everyone's toys. It's constantly their time on the iPad and they're getting away with it. We're talking about BDS. Yeah, BDS have just been dominating so far this season. And I don't know if there's anything that can really stop them. One thing I have to mention though is Jack isn't here with me. And you know how nice that feels? Finally, he's been relegated from EUL once <laughs> and he's been relegated from the desk ones now as well. But back to BDS. Ouch. Yeah, I, I just had to. Back to BDS, yeah. They just shine with this individual skill level. On combination with that, it's just incredible of a team. What they've been able to build in such a short time, mind-blowing to me. Now, if you're wondering where Fresh is or wondering why BDS is such a good team, well, Fresh is all the us later to explain that to you. I'm not missing. I am still here. And the one thing that I will say is some things keep people up at night. Sometimes it's trading. Sometimes it's ranky. What keeps me up at night is why BDS are such a goddamn good team on the attacks. So I prepared two reasons for you. The first one on the graphic is going to be that BDS have a high level of coordination between players. And this is what's impressive for such a new team. So if we roll the very first clip, you're going to see round one, play day one, when they played up against Wild on Cafe. Grim and Ying on the east side of the building, causing a huge distraction. Well, why are they doing that? Because simultaneously, Lee Kifak has repelled into Piano, used that distraction to go and take quite an advanced position inside of the bathroom within a minute 30 against Wild. Really easy, quick synergy together. And what it does is it opens up the site as Lee Kifak will find the opening kill of the game and in such an advanced position so early on, it's absolutely criminal how BDS are able to get away with it. They make these little plays together and they get away with it so often. But what's the second reason, you might ask? Well, the second reason is when it doesn't go well strategically, they've got individuals with exceptional mechanical skill. Fabian will talk about them as the best team. You know, everybody in the right role is the best player in that role. I'm going to roll one clip. It was the highlight of the week for one reason. Shaiko, this round for BDS wasn't won strategically. It was won because Shaiko managed to walk in, find a gap, kill three people, and then even in sight, find a fourth one. And that's what BDS have. On the one hand, they are so, so good strategically, but also on the other hand, when it's not going right strategically, they've got so many good players. It's not just Shaiko, it's Leaky Fak, it's Yuzis, it's Breeday, it's Solotov, it's all of them exceptionally mechanically skilled. We could watch that clip over and over again, but then when we're talking about these individual skill players on the side of BDS, of course we need one person on the side of ends to be able to stop them. Yeah, and you immediately get Skies up on this screen in front of you, and there's such a, so many reasons for it. Skies was a player that everybody scouted a year ago. Literally every single team in the league wanted something to do with him, and the reason for that is just how mechanically talented he is. I think every single player in ENS needs to take a step up. Skies is the one that I'm expecting to do so the most, and I know that he has that in him. I just think that this team overall needs to let go of the nerves, let's, get, let's go of the pressure that they feel that they have, because there generally is none. They are so new to this tier one scene. It's the first time that people fully respect them as an opponent. They need to relax, let themselves be kind of stepped over for a while, and just if one game comes through your way and you're like happy and everything is working well, well, it's just going to click eventually. In my mind, this team needs to adhere, adhere to four words. Keep it simple, stupid. They're trying too hard with different operator lineups, their operator compositions, their theory of how to play the game and their utility. They're not making it easy for themselves. They're making their own problems in like 90% of yeah. rounds. Keep it simple. Stick to what worked well when you were a tier two team and stick to what you know rather than necessarily what you want to be because you are good enough to beat these tier one teams. And what was working for them, if you're asking that question, is they were highly aggressive individually. Yeah. But they were also doing that at the same time. So what we're talking about is just simple mini plays that you showed with PDS. They were really good at doing the similar stuff, maybe not to the same at, like level, but they were very good at that. And they need to kind of find, find themselves again, I think, yeah. because they are much better than they've shown so far. Now, these two teams met each other less than a month ago, where BDS beat ENDS 8-6, so full on overtime, or almost full on overtime. This time around, we're going to CAFE. How are we feeling about this map for these two teams? CAFE as a map, I mean, BDS, are extremely good on this map. ENDS also really like it. So it's a preference map for both sides, both enjoy it. But then again, it, it's like, does the map matter? I said it the last time BDS played against Into the Breach. Does the map matter when you're BDS? 
Probably not. No, it doesn't matter whatsoever, because you're just going to shoot your way out of everything if you have to. But most of the time, they have the strategical depth to just pick that apart anyways. The big thing for me is obviously both of these teams have played Cafe. They both played it against the same opponent. BDS slapped Wild. Ents just got it done in overtime. But that's not the biggest thing for me. BDS have played four maps in EU League. They've lost one round on defense. Their start yeah, defense well. on Cafe, which is already considered a defender-sided map. So you would expect BDS to get out ahead and then never really let the foot off the throttle. I don't know if Ents had a big enough map pool to even compete with BDS here, mm, if I'm being brutally not. honest. Yeah. I mean, what we can be expecting from this game is probably quite a one-sided game as well, right? It would not surprise me if Ents go home with a 1-7 loss today. Aye, that doesn't sound all too good for uh, four ends here for our second French Derby, as we like to say it. But we can get our casters back in because the lobby should be ready. So our game should be starting very, very soon. Now, welcome back, Hap and Fluke. How are we? Ex how excited are we for this game? I mean, I, we're watching one of the best teams in the world play. You, you're excited, but it's almost like a watch behind fingers if you're an Ents fan, I think. Starting with BDS, you now, now just looking at them, it's like, how long can they be this dominant, right? It's like it's it's not like they're just winning their game 7-5, seven, 7-4, seven, and, you know, they're pushing on them like, wow, they actually have a good shot. It's just that they're completely decimating the entire opposition that they're having. And it's like, how long can they get away with that before someone steps up? And, and, and is it going to be like grand finals before they're starting to get like in trouble? Or is anybody in EUL going to give them a shot for the money? Well, someone's going to have to break that flawless streak of BDS. Will it be ends? We'll find out on Cafe with Hap and Fluke. Thank you very much, Anne. And yes, we will find out on Cafe. The Dostoevsky, they've both Dostoevsky been to before already this split against the same team. Wild, they suffered at the hands of both these rosters. But only one French team can prevail today. You say French team, actually. BDS, obviously... It's like with a bit of an asterisk now. The majority. Majority French, but they, they come in English now, so I'm going to claim them. <laughs> I mean, and ENS isn't like, you know, six French players either. They have a Luxembourgian player they in there. They come in French though. That's for me the deciding factor. They do probably, factor. yeah. Yeah, they probably do. Yeah. It's, you know. I mean, does that mean that all the other international teams are English teams because yep. they come in English? Yep. The only team. <laughs> yep. I mean, you say all the other international teams, it's only really the NA teams. And we maybe They're actually, all English teams? We maybe actually don't <laughs> want to claim those ones, let's, let's be honest. Right, we've unfortunately bounced straight into a technical pause, but there's still a lot to talk about in this showdown. Now, as was sort of highlighted, BDS are terrifying at this moment. 7-3, 7-2, 7-1, is the previous run of four games, and those opponents include G2 and Wolves. Both usually games that, although they can sort of go back and forth, stress BDS have just been stress free. On the opposite end, Ents losses to G2 and Secret, uh, an overtime loss to Fnatic, and one overtime win to Wild. It has been as scraped as possible to get their points, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, luckily for them, they're not far away from getting themselves towards a potential playoff spot. Uh, currently, two points removed. However, you know, there, there's some teams in the mix that have played one game less than them. Uh, of course, some that still have like a break day coming up as well, but they do desperately need to get themselves some points out here. Ideally, they get three is that would put them, um, you know, up onto sixth place right next to uh, uh, Wolves right behind into the breach. But it is BDS we're going up against, so it's a tall ask to go for three. So I think with any point, it would be quite happy here today, Ents. I mean, I it's just this game where you sort of go, we will probably lose this one. I don't know, you should always have that winning mentality, right? You should always sort of set yourself up as being like, yeah, we can beat anyone. Look at how it's going for Furia in the Brazilian league, not as well as people would have expected. And they are, you know, it's hard to argue that they came into this year as the best team in the world. You just can't. At the same time, you know, it's just how well BDS are playing how formulated everything seems, how hot the guns are, how unstoppable the players are. It's the fact that Shaiko is one of the lower rated of the team says everything. The lowest rated of the team. <laughs> At the start of the day, if the top eight, four of them were BDS players and the one that wasn't in that listing was Shaiko. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's silly, it's ludicrous, it's 
some of the best seas that we've been able to watch of anywhere over the past month and enter the team to try and step up against them today. Of course, Nantes had a really rough start, you know, if, if, if you just look at how they uh, they got in. Um, of course, they, they played the Malta series. They, they basically uh, didn't really get too far there. And just look at that rematch against Team Secret, which was a pretty, pretty hefty loss. Uh, you know, and, like luckily they managed to get that win against Wild, but again, all the way to overtime. You just said it before, they haven't had the warmest of welcomes into the league so far. Um, but we do always say uh, you, you're only, you know, an official EUL player once you get domed by Shinko. So I think they're about to get themselves the officially the welcomed um, to the EUL. For their sake, I hope not. But it is just a rite of passage at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, welcome to EUL. Here's your... Uh... Is this game mandatory Shiko? Is your mandatory how do we Shiko? Is this yeah. mandatory pressure? The play on Cafe. It is a very good map for both these teams, but it's one of those maps that I always sort of associate with BDS. I, I think yes. the freedom that they find and how they move around this map, what it offers their play style of aggressively sort of poking and retaking. There's not a huge amount of width to a lot of it, but the levels. It is a very dangerous cape. BDS love the bait. It, it all goes back to when Cafe was just reintroduced into the map pool, right? Like BDS would be that team that wasn't able to get proper control of Piano, uh, which was often like the main force of the top four attack. And then, you know, at 10 seconds, they were like, yes, we'll just have to pull the trigger. And they all walk in from the cigar shop and they still managed to win the round very convincingly. And it's like, how do you keep getting away with that? Because it didn't happen once. It didn't happen twice. That happened so consistently that even, you know, a year or a year and a half later, still talking about it, that that was like a trademark of BDS at this point. Even if they had no control, they would have no tr like no problem at all winning these rounds. This first engagement is trying to be weighed up here into the favor of, oh, you would have said Ents for a second, but Solotov leans into the fight. He's expecting the second follow through pre-fires and just ducks around the back. Skies. That's that take. Golotov taking off with a minute 30, and they've been able to get themselves in and underneath. They've got to see if they can try and turn this into a bit of control. The second engagement, Echo gets a little bit sprayed here. Another E1D will pop. Pifak isn't moving as of yet. They have the pings, and oh, oh, oh Neko. Huge take from deep. Yeah, just move right into the pre-fire out there. Great shots to come through and a good clear from the side of N. So with that, they can start building as they get themselves on piano to get themselves around, check some extra lines of sight. They're slowly getting themselves ready for an execute. There is still some uh, some flank drones that are being set up and some rotations that we're witnessing as well. I'm not quite sure if they actually got the uh, the evil eye or the black eye story that was located right behind the lamp. So they might still have information on Asics. So I'm not quite sure what they know about the rest of them though. 40 seconds. They still have to try and get this kit down. And well, Shaka is going to do his best to just slow down the approach and swing against him. You still got a back line of Breed, eh? They're watching, and as Jesus gets the catch onto. Skies, he went for the quick dive onto the balcony, but the Alder swinging from deep. The players in the middle of the site itself drop from the hatch. Three days caught in Freezer gets one, suffers a lot of damage. Great swing from Rykos. And ends open up for the first round. Yeah, great start there for uh, for Ants. Again, starting off solid with finding Solotov. Basically forcing him to chase the drone. He went aggressive on the window, falls back, gets picked up from the red stairs area. Bit of lack of information on the side of BDS, not knowing someone was already out there. After that, of course, the yellow player being picked up as well by uh, Nako, managed to get that long shot off from trains all the way towards white stairs. You have a two-minute advantage, like you shouldn't be you shouldn't be losing that, even if you're playing against BDS. Of course it can turn on at any point, but that, like, that is basically the best start you can wish for uh, on, on Cafe this early on. So make full use of that on the side of Ents. Now they need to continue that. But that's the most difficult part because BDS, of course, will adapt. They will realize, okay, this went wrong last time. Let's make sure that we're a little bit more dialed in towards those openings. You've seen... A lot of sort of false starts from teams before. I think Ents being able to get those early engagements. 
pressure was attempted to be sort of laid back against the approach and almost carpet and under their feet turned out. It's time to attention towards the top. The hatches are open. They're going to see if they can try and waste as much time above before they pull themselves back. Force that time where if you're still looking at the execute of the previous round, yeah, it ended up very, very clean and very well put to the pace, but they had about 20 seconds, 30 seconds to play with. If one of those engagements had gone wrong, sure, they might have been able to pull someone else into the situation, but otherwise at that point, they're putting the trust that the work is done and the push will not fail. Yeah, found a grid was going to be able to find the Ash, of course, who just dropped down the skylight or was walking underneath the skylight. Uh, boom, suddenly you find yourself with a big problem out there, right? So, something to keep in mind. Oh. Talking about people dropping the skylight. It's Rykos finding one, knowing about a player around on round, but it's a lot of spider sense to start tingling there and he starts rotating off. He's not going to take that fight. Probably feeling that he was being watched at that point and that they were ready to go for him. Oh, actually, good swing coming out from Bree Day. And you can basically, like, if you're playing down here, you know Bree Day is going to be in VIP. They're, 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 yep. Add one-on-one -on -one together. Yeah, he is sort of kind of known for that spot. Almost hangs a coat on the hangar player. But otherwise, still just getting this vertical done. They're at pretty good pace, actually, faster than you think. Could have otherwise been put before with the extension that was played above. They were so Slide quick Max. to remove the fact that it's actually gifted them bonus and the boon, the buck, breaking all the barricades above, but shepherding and pushback of the players, it's not the most uncommon for this position. Bomb located by attack. Turning off the phone quickly, Shanko's hoping to find someone with the vertical nitro cell. As Azix is putting down some pressure, he knows there's someone out there challenging wedding window as well. But now this is just the verticality that's being played here. But as he blows it a bit early, Azix now a bit, bit more stake with his rotation. And then they now need to make the decision where they want to push from. And it seems like there's still a lot of pressure being put on Bakery towards Wedding. Users is going to be receiving tons of flashbangs. Is Shiko here to support him? Because Bakery falls, which it doesn't. That's the diffuser down call. Have an opportunity oh. to hold it. Able to get the second there as the follow through. Not quite blinded on the back. Shiko's going for the retake above. Just misses and then finds the follow up engagement here. And Sky, suddenly all that's left. The first body was taken away from them there. They couldn't quite get a body in for the lockdown. And uh, even though the keeper barricade suffered a nerf, you can still see the strength of them and just allowing users to play Bakery as aggressive as he did in the positions that he did. The Ten final fight of Sky's great little. That peak round the corner with five seconds, five seconds three bodies and no kit. This is just an even second. It's just an exit frag, right? Like you're trying to take this fight to that point, but you're not going to be able to win the round no matter what you try, as long as you stay outside that building. Well played there from BDS. Good stall up on the top. There was a lot of verticality being open, not really much being done or being able to be uh, done with it. He said a push coming down for like a bakery kind of take. Hoping that they would be able to put up some pressure for, uh, horizontally. The lack of, like, the, the, the true real push coming through is just the one by one by one and coming in there. Not having to crossfire, not having opened up the wedding wall, which basically stops the player from playing in Cupcake. None of flashbangs. There's multiple things that could have saved them around there. And again, perfectly played by users, right? Rhett, what was happening? Duck himself in in the best possible solution. Found the kills, found the round eventually. Okay, it's still all to play for, still very, very early. And I mean, again, if we're going to talk about how that first round came down with three seconds, 30 seconds, and a single engagement could have been the deciding factor there, if they've been able to remove users, suddenly you've got Two players storming in with a protection side Attackers are heading on the end of uh, Wedding. And then they're just putting pressure into towards what was a very open site. It is still a lot closer than some of those end of the rounds might make you believe. I think at this point, what we want to see is maybe if you're looking towards BDS, EFAC being able to get himself on the positive of an opening engagement, or Solotov for that matter as well. Neither of them have found any success so far up to this point, and it seems like Ents have a really good way on how they want to lead themselves in. And yeah, the opening engagements so far have been Ents' way. 
as you mentioned. The first one was, of course, uh, based on like a good bit of bait coming through, like the drones being out, hoping to go for a bit of a pre-fire, which was punished. But BDS, they need to find themselves on the opposite side of it, or at least stall it long enough where there is not enough time left for the players' events to really get an execute going as soon as they find that opening kill. It's the first E when they pop, it's not going to find anyone, but this is definitely going to be a top floor take. They're trying to take that top down approach, see if they can then use that verticality into their advantage. However, I believe there might have been a double run out to come through that was traded evenly. So like a fact, will find a kill onto Rykos. I believe indeed Brady might have jumped out the window. Shaiko will go down in the meantime, though. I do you get the end of Shaiko, and you're right. It was the jump out from Dining Window with the swing from the bottom of White. Just to make sure that they got the kill, but it does also give the game away that there's one all the way deep. So they use that moment. They use that energy to push towards Shaiko or that position and take out the player there. Three versus four, a minute 20, and again ends. They've got themselves in this beneficial position here on the top or a site that statistically actually plays against a lot of teams' favors instead. Now is Solotov's moment to shine. He had an amazing game. It's the last time for BDS, and something where he had been a little bit quiet at first, getting himself used to the roster where users seemingly hit the ground running. Solotov, oh, he's going to hit Cigar Shop shooting, gets the drop on Skies. Three and three flash pranks to come through. Leak effect in an absolute crucial position. Has a slight gap here through the smoke, which he can use to stop any jump ins from truly happening. Solotov as well, watching it from the vertical. Those two players are crucial to stop any of these jump ins to come through. But the horizontal pressure comes in, and Solotov will drop. I oh, did the rotate. You saw him droning there as we were watching from the perspective across. And here now, the three versus two. They pull back that body balance. EFAC is unwavering. He knows exactly what he needs to hold, and he's waiting for the second to swing round. He fires against the boogie drone, and just gives a little bit of this away, uses his court in the next engagement, but wins it out. There's the follow through, and he's held firm. Azok stuck in the middle of both. He's trying to find a swing, but he is out of time. I said it before, he's not left with a lot, but he's just shy of the last drip. And that angle on that window is so important out there. He saw the quick response time. Didn't even have time to register if it was a boogie or not. Just pulled that trigger as soon as someone came through. And again, you know, good way, uh, good work actually from the side of Ents to clear out that vertical pressure that was out there from BDS. But time is a factor at that point. As soon as that boogie gets tossed in and you, you hear the shots coming out, you know that that window is being watched. You know that that jump in is probably not going to result in a kill, but actually to get you killed. There's not really enough time to go for a rotation at that point. So you find yourself in trouble. Kill from Solotov, wasting time as well as he makes himself known. Leak effect there. More importantly, finding that kill. If he would have missed that, that would have been a diffuser indeed, but a potential to plant. So locking that one off might have been the most important kill of the round. Attackers have located a bomb. So, BDS pulled themselves ahead, but definitely been a lot more stressed than the previous games we've seen them take, where it's very much set up in hand here. Ends up putting in a fight, putting in a shift every single round, and you're excited to sort of see where this gets to when we get to the second half, how this ends. It's going to stack itself up, because... So far on this attack, they have been phenomenal. They're finding that opening engagement, finding the pressure when they need to apply it. Even if it's otherwise just being pulled away from them. Extra footholds being opened up. Just to get yourself ready in case they are necessary. Again, this should be a top-down approach, but occasionally we do see like a quick push over the horizontal. See what we can make happen there. Get used to the boogie there. Lots of openings being made. It's I put a little bit of extra pressure on to Leak Effect, who's playing around in trains. Solotov, of course, saw that happen. He's now worried that someone might follow up behind it. Doesn't really have any additional cover. As piano is being drummed out. Look at that angle, though. Leak Effect can watch all the way up to the hatch. So a drop, we can actually cover off. Filthy, filthy angle. It's filthy. I mean, we'll see if it actually comes together at this point. There's always new things to be learned in this game. However many thousands of hours deep. 
sometimes you see in angles like I had no idea. He <laughs> just like I wish I knew that earlier. But not now, because I'm, I'm going to get that used against me in round. Yeah, oh, I know. As soon as this broadcast's over, I'm, I'm going and playing around with that angle. <laughs> Nako suffers. I'm assuming to that angle, because he was eyeing up the hatch. There's Solotov getting the end of the fight. Uses and Shaiko. They're able to get one apiece as well. This execute has fumbled and fallen apart. Fortunately for Ents, this is the... A week as they've come in on towards their engagements onto the map itself. They haven't been able to get any territory control here. Seeing that the fight is being pressed right up against them. With the kit isolated and alone in a bar on a Monday afternoon. All they can do is see if they can try and give it a little bit of company, but it's going to be awkward to get there when BDS is selling you bars closed. Willing to double down on that as well. Piano gifted to them, but no real importance towards the actual side. The hatch is there. Capcom traps are being spotted out. You would assume those are no longer going to be triggered by any of the attackers, but you never know. And as they continue going over the top floor, and the boogies are being sent out as well to cause a little bit of noise, a vertical push needs to come down now. And oh, oh, but he gets himself removed by Shaiko. I mean, Shaiko dropping it from the swing round. I said we wanted to see a little bit more from EFAC. We do. We also get Solotov in this action, and what we do get is a flawless round. I said it before the mining dining round that statistically coming into this, that was the weakest side. I only had about a 40% defense win rate. So them going there is okay, seeing if they can work and then they make every site work. It's just BDS at this point. They have plans. They have plays for a lot of this game now at this point with the age of the roster and the talent of the players. And here, forcing the tactical timeout and they're realizing BDS is starting to heat up. That is problematic. When they start to heat up, is there any stopping, right? It's like, it, it is like an unstoppable train that's coming at you. How much can you do in the tactical timeout? Now, you've already managed to make them lose their second defensive round of the stage so far. That, that in and of itself uh, is an is a achievement. But it doesn't net you any points. Maybe for the viewers, but not on the actual board. So there's a lot still to do if they want to find themselves with points on the board here. And, you know, you said it before, not every game can be about winning. Sometimes you have to be realistic as well as a team. And of course you want to win. And if you can win, you will go for that victory. But this might be about stalling out this game for as long as possible, learning as much as you can, and see if you can maybe take a point home. It's always that rough thing though because i think outside of that round that, that's the first round where ents have seemed locked out of it that's the first round where bds have seemed in full control even though there was that sort of round down here before where yeah they were trying to force the pressure they're trying to force control what ents have been able to do before this round fell apart was pretty great they got the opening kill yeah, they had full three. control over the sort of first and the second story or second Five and seconds. third if, if you don't say ground floor and at that point, it was the actual push on to users who sort of stuck in, dug his heels, put some keeper barricades up behind him and moved in and amongst flashes to get two kills. That's the sort of thing where that's the single instance that's gone away from you and the round's gone away from you. But Ents are closer in this fight than a lot of other teams have been up against BDS so far, regardless of the fact that it's a three to one. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And even though we just had like a follows round to come through again, you know, those happen every now and then. Um, I, mean, I believe, you know, Korea League, we had a game that had four or five flawless rounds in a single game. It was a you game. Know, that, that That's a true blowout. It was a game. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's the, the true, uh, if the greatest team currently, Alon can be defeated. Maybe BDS oh. can be defeated as well. Single foot of an Azami who's back onto the site. So, Lika Fak, he'll be spotted out, but don't think he's going to be receiving too much pressure there. Otherwise, they're going to have to be really aggressive if they want to shut him down. And as the biggest start coming up again, that verticality is key. Uh, we, oh, actually, good shot from Nako onto Shaiko. Just reverse what Shaiko usually does to others. And I was going to say, it's a good time to start opening up vertically. This site, you need to get a lot of vertical control often. 
to stop any of the power positions from being played, or at least the, like, you know, power positions that have vertical above them. And that way you only force them back into two or three different spots where they can defend the side from, which are then easier dealt with if you only have to worry about those. Yes. Still sitting, bomb has been located. keeping everything locked down towards his name on the back end of VIP here. The most important person in this round is seemingly the next they want to try and force out. Jack, getting rid of all the barbed wires, making the sort of area around him tougher to play and tougher to be locked in on as the rest of the vertical gets done. It's tense, giving themselves options, giving themselves wiggle room if things start to fall away from them. Just misses then finds. Efac, I thought that was really the biggest missed opportunity. Nako gets solid dog. There's the swing onto Free Day. And the Jackal's able to get it locked down pretty easy. Isn't a flawless response. But it's as close as you can get. And brilliant bounce back. Good bounce back indeed. Seeing that vertical work out there that we talked about before. It stopped that rotation from Likafak from really being useful. Almost missed, as you mentioned. But still able to find that kill when it mattered most. And then 3 2. Suddenly that looks a lot more friendly being 3 1 down and looking at the potential 5 1 being in your uh, your face. Now you need to continue. See if you can make this a 3 3. Get that even half in. Really make it hurt where BDS have been shining the most, which is on that defense side. Three to two. They might find themselves driving towards an even half here. And I mean, it said it feels like this is the most BDS have sort of been pressed and stressed so far. It's always that translation of when you come to a map that you know your opponents play a lot, that you know you can get all this access towards it. What we might actually see is when BDS gets the attack, they very much learn how Ents plays. It feels like Ents have done their homework. Which is, is a statement you'd like to say about a lot of teams and a lot of maps and a lot of rounds. But it's not always the case. I, mean, I would say a lot of the teams do their homework. It just doesn't pan out the way they thought it would as soon as they meet the team, right? Like, you're obviously watching their, their scenario, their scrim, uh, not the scrim, sorry, the officials. And it's like, hey, this is how it can counter. And it just doesn't work because it feels like a quick play is coming up at me. I mean, there they are, breaking and busting their way in right underneath. They're looking towards the reinforced wall, and they're looking to see if they can find a first engagement. Can't the camera out, but nobody's been caught. There it is. Shaiko, the first victim. Azox looks for the second and gets doubled down onto Yuz. It's about to be swung from the back end, and Evac does at least stop the entrance, Ash. But two players taken out with just a blink of an eye. I said early on, one of the problems Ents was suffering was the late executes left them no problems to shuffle and rotate. Here, they have pretty much the entirety of the round, and Epac has all of that time as well to suffer. There's one. His second for the round, but he's got to try and get an ace clutch as he's called again on the E1Ds. Jax just has to sort of wiggle that kit closer towards the site where is it? Oh, above. Epac's hunting underneath with Rykos having the pings on the players. He's having to watch absolutely everything. They can very easily get this kit secured. Pings are coming through. There's at least another body. And okay, you start to sit up and take notice, but then you get sat back down. And well, I think it's time we maybe have a little bit of a call in with one of our desk. Hello, Emmy, Fluke, hi. Um, hi, Hap as well. One thing that I want to say, obviously, as we turn into the half, it's a free free split. Now, I'm looking at the operators that are banned and I'm seeing a Grim ban and a Ying ban. BDS, they've used in half of their rounds, they haven't played a Breacher so far on attack. They use a lot of Grim, they use a lot of Dokubi, they use a lot of, um, I've forgotten the name, Ying as well. Ying, Dokubi, uh, Grim. Two of them are banned, so are they going to have to have to play a little bit more Orthodox? That's the big question that I'm wondering on their attacks, because these bans significantly nerfed them from last time they played Cafe. Thank you very much, Fresh. And Bob yes, he's bringing the insight right now is maybe it's not just homework done on how they hold, but also what they can removed from the pushes app. Yeah, the thing is though, right? Like we've seen it happen before where we see certain operators banned for specific people. Now, I don't think that's the case here. It's mostly for the execute. But they just swap over to like plan B. 
which is then unknown territory, and it just works out wonders for BDS as well. So, I mean, we'll get to see in the next couple of rounds whether or not it's going to be, uh, you know, exactly as they hoped it would on ends, you know, finding out these bands, or if this is going to be a plan B BDS that might be as strong as the other lineup that they were bringing before. So, it's the big question I'm having right now. A BDS. They're going to see if they can try and match some of the pace. This game's been taken out of their hands a little. It's rare to see so many of their players hit negative. In fact, the entire roster came into this play day all with positive KDs, which this deep into the season, this much performance behind them. does more than any other stat. The take towards the top. RN's going to be able to keep themselves a little bit out of arm's reach. Let's see what hides in the dark. The scans instantly that verticality coming through. Or at least an attempt to challenge. Nothing really hurting them as of yet, and a pretty effective roam clear to come through. I think everybody currently from ends have fallen back after the first minute has fallen. And BDS now quickly checking out with drones, just making 100% sure there's no one left around. Setting up their flanks as well. I think Leak Effect really helps, of course, with the Ionox. Can just see if any feet have been uh, around just in the last couple of seconds, minute. The quicker you are on the side, the more information you're going to get from that. As Nitro Cells are being tossed up, it's a bit of a help for the vertical play that users otherwise would have to do with the Kaber. This point, I talk about how much you sort of got his pace set and the options you're opening up, but. Getting the roots through on the vertical, but without the catch on a single player, you're still looking at all the smoke canisters. And he's obviously going to build himself an arsenal in his back pocket. A lot of impacts and, well, even a, a cap can trap. If you're feeling real spicy. But it's actually Jax who gets the first bit of spice. Solotel taken off. They're sort of trying to lead into this vertical. Get themselves a early open striker now, trying to push into what seems to be VIP gets swung, is going to call that out, but there's a player right behind the long bar as well. And look at that, another one looking right through the vertical out here. So Shaco's quite literally stuck between three players here. He needs the rest of his team to help if he wants to make any moves happen. This three days, just trying to lean in and get the kit tucked behind. He doesn't get himself ready for Rykos. Floating in the middle underneath the vertical and he still gets a second onto EFAC. Shaiko's gonna have to slip his way past. Watch the cover with Rykos on three. Almost four. Shaiko, 10 seconds, still having to clear out VIP on his own. He gets the kit, but he can't get any further. And keep it cool in Freezer. Again, it's just this BDS there walking right into the trap, right? Like. They had the verticality, but it wasn't actively being watched. And you lose three people to a single player. The first kill, by the way, standing in between two smokes right underneath verticality. That should have been known. That should have been seen. That should have been picked up. And then that same player can continue to go on and find two more kills, basically crippling you for the rest of the round. And that is not what we used to be seeing from BDS. That's a bit wobbly out there. I mean, at this point as well, just him being able to be in a position you fully understand and expect what BDS was doing there, which was to force them out to shepherd them off. But as he said, being able to survive in that place, it, it takes a lot of bravery, but it should be swept up so quickly. It should be forced away so easily even Bride was surprised Five to find an to engagement go. on that swing around the corner and you know you you, you can say a lot about how that's an expectation game how it's bitten them and how it's presents into the lead here but at the same sort of moment of it bds need to be snappier they need to be more turned on and clued on to what's going on that is the thing, right? That's why you open up vertically. So you can, you can stop them from being in these positions. I said it before a couple rounds ago, that side is so vulnerable vertically as it only leaves one or two, maybe three positions if you're lucky, left to actually play. But if you're not watching the verticality and they get a smell of that on the defense, 
you can bet that they're gonna be playing in the middle of the site because no one will expect them being there as soon as you enter. And it's not like you have time with 20 seconds left to, you know, take your time droning out the site, see if there's anybody in those kind of positions. Nako. Oh, slightly less dangerous position here, but they seem well aware. They sort of pop the bullets over. He really wants to swing that window, you can tell, but he's really holding himself back. Three day is more than expecting. Not just the jump out, but just an engagement to come from that corner as the flashes hit the player. He's hoping to make him panic, but Nako is held steady and firm for as long as he's going. He's playing off the audio of that Banshee to go for the swing and the pre-fire and still nothing. Three day. Very careful for this jump out. It's going to happen either way. The injury is there, but the kill is on the side of BDS. And users will go on to confirm that kill, bring it back to a three on three, but a minute 20 left and you're disadvantaged. You're going to get a target out at least from Deimos and Likafaka opens up for the scale on Takiba slightly too late. Rykos, he's on the roam and the spin round and oh, he misses out the engagement. The soft plays against him, but it does get traded. So at least that's something they can work with. It should have been clean as the blinds come across the top. They do not have the kit that is cold far away where Free Day was felled. Jack's getting users. Shake's going to drop as well. Hence, two rounds difference now. Is this going to be the loss that BDS will have to take? It's definitely starting to get way closer for comfort. The tactical timeout's even out now. And ends the team that, again, not the warmest of welcomes in the league. Stepping up big time now is leading what could be one of the favorite teams for this year. It's always where you least expect it. Ends. A team who, up to this sort of point, you know, it struggled to pull themselves late on. Okay, what as weird as it is to say BDS have to work with here at this moment in time is that Ents have gone to OT twice, winning one and losing one against Wild, against Fnatic. Truly, even getting to this point, BDS being tested the most by Ents, I think is probably the biggest surprise to BDS. Be right. I don't think they would have expected this game to go the current way that it does. Especially if you were looking at the standings, just those three points out of two games. I'm not saying it's any underestimation because I don't believe BDS underestimates any of their opponents. Like they've been very thorough on their preparations. But sometimes things just don't click, they don't connect. And the opponent plays into that perfectly. And I think we're into one of those games here today where Ants just is able to get the better of BDS, that they found some of the weaknesses, they're exploiting them, and BDS unable to formulate a response. Look about like look at the quick rounds that we've seen as well when Ants were attacking. BDS unable to find a, a, an adequate response in time. Of course they could fight back, of course they make it close. It isn't enough. At this point, and what did they talk about in their time? Uh, you can sort of get the estimations of BDS though, and they gotta try and get their heads screwed on. They gotta try and get a bit of a better hold of these loose rotations and drones, as I said. Although it was a trade out that happened underneath the site, it really could have and should have been answers as a clean take. So here, getting a handle on these loose players, loose bits of attention. In fact, the preparations of the Claymores this time round. The roll of the line on the back end given to someone else. Free day instead, playing that Habana back on. Ash has come out. Jax is under a lot of pressure. Efax the first to suffer from it though. Rikos actually gets a bit on the back. Device ready. In a very good game so far, Rikos 11 kills. 
Ryan is still running strong. Openings are being made into Piano, however, so BDS is trying to take that top floor under control. The mirror windows are a problem, though. How are you going to be dealing with those? Of course, uh, in the normally you could use an explosive like Ash, but not really on the board right now, not chosen. So going to have to use some Xcaros instead as Azox. Holding a passive angle, leak effect going down first. And Azox instantly deciding that he might have an opportunity to go for a bit of a move as the Xcaros kind of relocate him. Yeah, I mean, he did not have a choice at that point. As soon as the wall there fell, he couldn't play that kind of cut position he was in. They know they have that opening and body. Although he uses his knock-in on the door, from Snow, he doesn't have the kit. He can't impact and act off the back of it. They pinch out the player behind the mirror window. Dolotov also suddenly gets Skies as well. So the balance has flipped in towards BDS's favor. They have the vertical control at about 40 seconds to try and make some use of it. Like a spawning one, but misses the opportunity to find a kill. It's a double take, and he doesn't get either. No team kill. Team kill, though, as well to come through. So at least he has that trade to go for him. But Azek still has the opportunity to retake the top four if he really wants to. Rykos finds Solotov with the plant, goes down. They're going for the stick. Users has to watch the Attack vertical. Bride gets it cemented. The fight's about to come to his left, but they're going to go a bit split. One on Lumber gets the first. A two versus one. Bride. Holding on to keep them off map point, but he can't. Two stories of destruction. And the lead story right now is Ed on map point, about to hand BDS their first loss. What a story that would be. I mean, we've seen it, Emmy, in some of like the content that was shot with the players where they could choose their dream team. A lot of them actually went for the coach of Ends. Uh, I'm not quite sure the pronunciation. Akdar, I think it is, or something like that. But everybody basically pointed out that he is so good at counter strating and just preparing everything and just being there for his team. And we might just be seeing that into full effect right now as everybody on Ents is firing. And we're able to shut down, most importantly, the round right after the tactical timeout from BDS. And now they are on that point. They have three opportunities to lock this off. And, you know, often people would expect this to be a quick game. Probably the scores reversed, however, where BDS would be on that point right now, about to lock this off in a 7 3. I mean, if you just. A little bit lost for words, I think, it is the fair atmosphere right now. You're seeing what has been a brilliant performance for men. There's no two ways about this. BDS have been outplayed so far to this point in this game. It's not over yet. It's only three rounds. They can try and find a rotation here. It would not be the first time. They've had to pull these sort of games back from the death knell, but... And this game has been brilliant. You try to piece together where things can be changed, what can be shaken out of Ence's gameplay, and they're just so reactive, so responsive towards what each other's doing. Three Day wants to try and just strong arm their way in towards Bake. Oh! Almost a huge C4, still tons of damage onto Three Day and uses, though. It's definitely going to be handicapping them slightly for the remainder of that round, but it looks like they might be going quick into Wedding, trying to take bake, uh, Cupcake bell, uh, Bar right there, Emmy. I mean, that's it. Five players with the first fall. There goes User Sky. Somehow gets out of the Capital Bolts. Wants to step back in, but he's just watching towards the Monty. Solotov gets caught out on the back end as well. Might get picked up. Shaiko, it was from the top window, and that's from the ground floor. Chico's watching everybody fall around him. Skies has retaken Cupcake. As Solotov gets back up. The gate is reactivated. Everything is reset. It's back to square one for BDS, but they've only got two and a half players left to do it with. And they've lost the Monty, the crux, the start, the tip of the push. Mako sits really desperate for an adventure. He's about to fight. Capital gets cut. There's two. There's end. A flawless end to an absolutely outstanding map from Ents. You know how 
like we said, Emmy, at the start of the game, not every game is about winning. Some are just to make it painful for their opponents and see if you can take points home. I think this is both. They are definitely felt some pain towards BDS. Three points home as well. What an incredible result coming out from ENDS. I mean, just unbelievable, really. When you sort of look at the weight of it and you see how the teams get themselves set up for this engagement, you would never have predicted this result. And I feel like some of the people who might have put some channel points on ENDS are going to be sitting pretty happy after today. But talking of happy, I'm curious to see if they're happy on the desk. Ends have taken down BDS, and whilst it's April Fools, we are sure not joking about that one. It's a day where a titan seemed to fall, all the flawless streaks get broken, and Ends they pick up three points against BDS. I, I just don't have words for it. It's such like the the points are super important for them if they want to try to compete for the major, and they're grabbing points against one of the teams that nobody expects them to grab points against. Yeah. I mean, I said before the game, I'm expecting a se solid seven-one for BDS. What do we get? Honestly. A complete domination by Ants. They played really, really good, both on the strategic level, but also the individual level, they really stepped up. They've literally just like taken the script. No, doesn't matter. It was Ants' story today, and I think, you know, that's that's the thing for them is I asked them to keep it simple, right? And that's all they did. Yep. They didn't overcomplicate any steps. They just went through their process and then they allowed themselves to build themselves into the game. It did look a little bit dodgy at what, one three down? But yep. then they pulled off two great rounds back on their attacks um, and and really went from there. It was, you know, they're the first team to even take more than one round off BDS's defense. Yeah. How did they do it? Simple stuff, played with each other, played aggression. It honestly looked like Ents had had a big reset in the game from last week that they went with Fnatic and went all the way to overtime and honestly overcomplicated the hell out of that game to now. Excellent improvement. You know, Sometimes I hate working with you because you pick exact words I'm about to I hate working with you too, Fabi. Yeah, but that's because I'm an annoying person, not because I'm bad at my job. True. Maybe you're not bad at your job either. Thank you. You're great. I love you. Thank you. However, what we saw from Ants here was that they actually looked like a team for the first time yeah. since I think they joined EUL. And I'm super happy for them that they did that. Because up until today, I've actually been kind of praising them and saying, like, I know they have it in them. I know that I believe in them. And today they really showed it. And it, 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 it's, you say it's simple, yeah. It's simple in combination with the teamwork that they look, because they look like a group. One thing that I really liked from them as we get onto the highlights of them on their defense, which is, I think, one thing that no team has done yet in terms of a game plan against BDS, test their executes. Ents were not trying to fight BDS. They were not trying to find picks. They were allowing BDS enough map control and then aggressing when BDS wanted to execute. If you look where the round ends, it wasn't in the early game or even the mid round for Ents or BDS. It wasn't determined then. It was always in these executes late onto site, which is one thing that I guess I'd been saying for teams when, you know, BDS, can you, what's their execute like? We've not seen anybody kind of approach that way. Yeah. Ents finally did. So strategically, I think they made a great decision there as well. And it makes sense on that map as well. Sorry, Anne, I'm interrupting you because I have so much points here. <laughs> the map suits that playstyle so well because like, executing against five is almost impossible. It is almost impossible, but it also shows that we've seen something like some really good growth on the side of Ents because I remember that very first game they played in Europe League against Secret, and you two said after that Ents were nowhere playing near what they usually do. They yep. were playing like themselves. They were a very scared team. They were playing really anxious, and here we saw them trying to retake that top four control, having those individual players pop off, and that is something I am really happy to see from Ents as well. They dare to play against BDS. They don't get scared against such a big team. Their confidence really was shining through today. Look at the entry deals that they had. Like they took, I think they had one entry that throughout the entire game or something like that. And it shows that they have the confidence. Again, I, I just keep hammering on the same stuff because that's what they were doing. They were playing the basics really good together and they were looking like a group. And we haven't seen it. Individual no. performance on top of that. And that's the thing, on the balance of things, before this game, literally everybody even Ents fans probably would have been like, yeah, we're going to lose to BDS. Everybody does. And I think that performance kind of proves that there is substance in that team. Yeah. If you look at the very, very last round of the Fnatic game last week, Ents couldn't open a hatch with Maverick, right? <laughs> They've gone from that, that extreme to then absolutely slapping around BDS on a BDS map that they're great on as well. And it's like that, that improvement within, what, six days? Yeah. 
honestly, for me, is like night and day. And also on the least favorable side, I guess, on Cafe on the attack, mm. that final round, the rush execute from the snow door, that's something I really like to see as well, adding some spice to the gameplay. So one of the very important aspects of Rainbow Six Siege is changing your tempo throughout your games. It's something you constantly yeah. have to think of because what happens is if you play slow the entire time and you always execute with 20, 25 seconds left, how unpredictable are you? Not at all, right? Because you always know what the other team is going to do. You're going to execute 25 seconds. So one time you execute 25 seconds, one time you rush, one time, one minute 30, you make an extremely aggressive execute from nowhere. You change up your game plan and, and seem to actually have that down today, which speaks of their confidence. Now, with our two flawless teams being beaten today, that shakes up everything in the context of our group. BDS, of course, still at the very top, but look how much ends have climbed with these three points. They now find themselves in towards that top six spot. That could put them to playoffs in their very first year in Europe League. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the expectations for Ents, I don't think from anybody were too high before the start of the league. They've got themselves into that super spot. They will be breathing down, you know, the necks of Into the Breach. Fnatic, who didn't play today, you know, even G2 and Secret are within sight, within one win from uh, Ents at this point. It also puts a hell of a lot of pressure on Virtus Pro, particularly, and Wolves who play next. And then at the top of the leaderboard, you know, everyone was expecting BDS to run away with the, the league. They showed that they're capable of doing that, but it also proves that they're human as well. Maybe it was a bit of underestimating of the enemy because maybe you didn't expect the most out of them because Ents had looked quite poor. But honestly, how amazing is it that our league is so close that anybody can beat anybody. When is the last time we had Europe do that? I don't remember it. Because we always had our clear favorites. Sure, BDS were still a clear favorite here, but they actually got kind of handled today very well by Ants. They yeah. really they, used, they took control. They decided the game is our game and we're just going to approach it the way we want to. BDS got BDS, as we can <laughs> yeah. say, maybe. Um, but one player that really took big, big part of that was Rikos, for sure. Yeah, I mentioned Skies before the game and how everybody have been scouting him. Rikos is actually another player that everybody has been scouting. I personally had him as a player for G2 in the long-term future if there was to be changes, because we always scout players when you're working in staff. Today, he showed the quality that I have been seeing in him for a long, long, long time. And what better team to do that against than BDS? I mean, putting up the numbers and going 13 to 5 against what most people consider the most frag heavy team in the league, that speaks for itself. It's incredible. And he had a really, really good game. He should be super proud of himself. Well, he had a really good game, but we also have him ready for an interview with us because I really want to ask him some questions about how Rikus feels after this game. Good evening. You just took down the number one team in Europe League. How are you feeling? Hello, guys. Good evening. Um, feeling super great. Good effort for the past week uh, from the team to fix our mistakes. And uh, yep, we did it today. Uh, Rikos, so, you know, you talked about fixing those mistakes. Um, what did you... I guess, what did you identify last week when you had that mixed result? Um, and what did you change going into this week? Actually, uh, for this week, we just told ourselves, we talked a lot to each other, and we told ourselves to just um, go again for all the basics, to just delete what we what we had, which uh, there were a lot of mistakes in our game plans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think basics just won us the game today. So going up against BDS, obviously they were unbeaten, right? They hadn't lost a game. Did you guys feel any pressure or was it the fact that you were going up against BDS that just allowed you to just play with freedom? I think the past week uh, we had some pressure in our team uh, when we played and uh, this week coach told us just have fun guys and play your own game and uh, we will smash with them. Sounds very good though, a good game plan. What can we expect from you for the next game? So you've now taken down the number one team. Mm, actually, I think we need to find consistency in what we do to keep uh, good results in every game, so we will see. I think you have a very clear idea of what needs to be done and what you have been doing so far. Is there anything you want to say to the fans as well to close up the interview? Yep. Uh, thank you guys for supporting us. I know the past weeks were uh, a bit terrible from, from our side. And uh, in French, uh, merci à tous, tous ceux qui nous supportent. Vraiment, uh, on essaie de travailler du mieux qu'on peut pour uh, rendre les gens uh, fiers. Et merci. Well, thank you so much for your time, Brian, because it was great to speak to you after such a dominant victory. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.
I think we need some time to uh, to really unwind after what we just saw with ENDS, of course, taking yeah. down BDS. So we'll be heading to a break. But after that, a very final game of the day, Wild versus Wolves.